You're tuned in to the Eye on Global Politics radio show, coming at you live from the heart of Oregon's Willamette Valley, broadcasting around the world on eyeonglobalpolitics.com. Here's your host for the next hour, Dr. Paul F.J. Aranyas. And good morning, good afternoon. It is 12.01 p.m. here on the West Coast of the United States and in Oregon's Willamette Valley. Thank you for joining me today on this Monday. It's a little hazy out there. A lot in the Willamette Valley from the smoke coming in uh, all over from Washington, uh, Idaho, Montana, fires burning in, in, in Oregon, hoping for everyone's safety and that we get this smoke cleared and the fires put out, at least contained uh, the ones that are burning a ways away from us. But uh, it's always a concern these days. We had those fires uh, a couple years ago, and a lot of people lost a lot of property and, and their lives here in Oregon uh, a couple years ago in those devastating fires. And of course, our prayers for the people in Maui uh, recovering and, and dealing with the horrific catastrophe that is that has occurred in, in Maui. And so it's uh, another week, and the world is uh, seems to be uh, almost Armageddon with, with wildfires, earthquakes, tornadoes, um, flooding in Southern California with Hurricane Hillary hitting uh, Mexico and, and Southern California. So there's a lot going on. It's all related to climate change. And uh, so hoping everybody uh, is safe and sound in dealing with all these weather events. So last last time we were talking about immigration and immigration and the U.S. border. I came across a, a disturbing story from a couple of weeks ago where a three-year-old died on a bus traveling from Brownsville, Texas, to Chicago, Illinois. And the reason why that three-year-old was on such a long bus trip was that three-year-old was a migrant, part of a migrant family that was put on a bus sponsored by Texas, by the government, the governor of Texas, and bus to Chicago in this ongoing political scheme, this ongoing political stunt to take migrants at the border and bust them to Democrat-run cities. This child was put on a bus with family members, with parents, in the middle, middle of summer and bust over 1,400 miles to Chicago. Well, about 1,200 miles in, that child became severely ill with fever, diarrhea, etc., and was taken off the bus and, and sent to a hospital where he or she sadly passed away. And this is being uh, claimed as the first uh, death under Governor Greg Abbott's program of sending migrants from the border to Democrat-run cities. What can you say? 1,400-plus miles, that is the equivalent of sending a, a, an already exhausted family from Madrid to Berlin by car, by bus. That's something like a 21-hour to 25-hour drive. Who does this? I mean, what kind of chaos are we living under with? What kind of uh, immigration system are we living with where they are just playing political football, political football with people's lives? If the federal government can't step in, and do something about this and stop this because they're complicit with uh, this harsh immigration system that President Biden has given these uh, rules for asylum that you need to go to a third party to to get asylum, a third party country to get asylum. You can't just show up in the United States. Even if you're persecuted, you have to first go to a, 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 
a third party, that means uh, anybody that's not from Mexico has to go to Mexico or Guatemala or Honduras, which may not be a, a proper place to to seek asylum for the, the particular person, uh, or they may not feel safe, or they're coming for basic uh, to to uh, to escape violence, and they're met with violence in, in many many situations in some of these unstable countries. President Biden also put in a law that presuming if you're from Mexico that that you won't be eligible to seek asylum. And all kinds of twisted and and crazy laws to do the same thing that quite frankly that that Donald Trump was with a little different minus the the chi- the 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 child separation on an extreme level but still separating families putting all these uh these policies in so they can appear kinder it's like good cop bad cop and you have uh, the bad cop that is putting up razor wire on the border of Texas using state government to put in some extreme measures busing families that are killing little killing a little kid here a 3 year old kid what what's the federal government going to do it's going to sue them, put them in a long court case. They can't step in and stop this this uh, inhumane uh, treatment. So if they start killing people in, in concentration camps, what are they going to do? Sue them? It's the federal government. It's it's it, you, you know you have to step in at some point and stop the madness. I mean, you can see it's it's a madness. It's a sickness right now. It's a it's a sickness. I mean, you can. Read uh, just the comments. I just came across a comment from a uh, candidate for U.S. Senate for, he's a sheriff. And he says, he's speaking too fast. This is subtitles. He, basically, he's saying uh, they want, they're handcuffing Border Patrol agents. They want more, more law enforcement. They want more force and they're taking the fight to Washington to get that force they want more force they're blaming the migrants over and over here you have people blaming the migrants for fentanyl blaming migration for the fentanyl crisis on migrants it's hard to even read some of these comments because they're absurd. As we talked about last time, the overwhelming majority of drug traffickers are on this side of the border. The American side, they're Americans facilitating that trade. The cartels are operating with U.S. made guns smuggled to them. United States corporate America is arming, arming the drug cartels. Corporate America is arming the drug cartels. And if you don't think it's corporate America, there is uh, nothing more corporate America than the gun industry. You know, it's amazing that that they, they can't solve this immigration problem humanely and institute work programs and have all the resources there at the border. Uh, it can't be because of the lack of funds. It just can't be. When you send $200 billion with a B in financial aid and weapons and military aid to fuel a proxy war in Ukraine and you have an ongoing blank check, a commitment that has no end, it can't be because of lack of funds. I refuse to believe that there's any problem this country that uh, is due to lack of funds. It can't be. Don't bring that garbage. Don't bring that excuse. Say excuse from uh, in Congress or from uh, President Biden or from the Republican leadership or from uh, your congressman. Anytime you go to a town hall and they say, oh, "Well, we don't have the funds or we can't fund it fully," hogwash, hogwash. I don't want to hear it. I never ever want to hear that. I don't want to hear it. It's 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 baloney. 
It has nothing to do with funding. They got all the funds in the world. When you can send $200 billion to a corrupt foreign country to carry on a proxy war because you want a certain outcome and you refuse to press that client state for peace negotiations, so much so that that client state writes into law that they will refuse to negotiate with the other head of state. So much so that that foreign head Uh, client state government comes to your country dressed like an eight-year-old and demands more and more and more and more. And you give it to them. You give it to them. Time and time again. I want this. I want that. I want this weapon system. I want that weapon system. Give me, give me, give me. So you can carry on your, uh, your, your proxy war and Uh, through these extremists that don't want to negotiate anything. And they can put through all the excuses, all the excuses, well, the the other side is not, the other side is this. If if we don't do it, you're going to face with this. The point is they don't want to negotiate. They write it into law as a, uh, that they're not going to negotiate because it's an extremist government. And in order to carry on a proxy war, The people in Washington needed an extremist government. They wouldn't have a a war if they were, uh, if, if, if Gandhi was running Kiev. Even if uh, Russian troops had come in, they probably would have diffused the whole situation because the, the solution wasn't that difficult. You know, stop killing ethnic Russians and stop uh, prohibiting uh, ethnic Russians from speaking their language stop shelling ethnic russians become a neutral country respect you know respect your neighborhood and the fact that it's complex there's comp- complexities where you know you just can't bring a foreign adversary a, a military alliance right onto the border of your giant neighbor so if you, if you had you know not even gandhi but a, a normal normal leadership that didn't come about through a, a violent coup in 2014, you wouldn't have an extremist government there that was unwilling to negotiate and was siphoning tax dollars off to flush them down the, the toilet of uh, nonsense, nonsensical violence. So, I mean, if, if you're a keyboard warrior out there of Ukraine and I don't use that term in a um, in a positive way as I, I use it when I say keyboard warrior I say it's a, a term that means that you are advocating for a, an extremely bloody war to continue a bloody war from the comfort of your keyboard of, of your office in in Denmark in Lithuania in Berlin, in New York, in Los Angeles, in Mobile, Alabama, while you're advocating this war to continue, uh, and it is not you that is that that is dying or your family members, but somebody else. So you can have some kind of video game uh, experience and root on the side that you want to win. Well, all those resources, money that's going to this. Proxy war could be facilitating humane treatment at the border. An immigration system that welcomes people with hot meals and a place to sleep. Enough people to process people and do background checks and to to facilitate their move into uh, temporary labor contracts that be- can become permanent. That we can uh, facilitate a way uh, where we can incorporate the new arrivals into this country. We have a labor shortage. We have a labor shortage. We have jobs in this country that Americans are unwilling to do. And we have people arriving on our border that are willing to work hard. That doesn't mean you're going to exploit them, but you give them decent wages, a living wage, and everyone will prosper. Everyone will prosper. As I said before, all the details can be worked out. 
You can have this idea or that idea, but what is not a good idea is what is happening right now at the border with people being used as political football. Little kids dying on, on buses being shipped around by, uh, by a governor that's playing a, a little juvenile, a deadly juvenile game. And a federal government that seems incapable to, to step in and to assert itself because it's doing much of the same thing that the Republican governments are doing in a, in a different form. You got GOP leaders who once praised Catholic charities, now they wanted to fund the group. Some Republicans don't like the work of Catholic charities and other faith-based groups helping migrants at the U.S. border. The Washington Post from uh, the end of July. A few Republican members of Congress are threatening to reduce or eliminate funding for Catholic charities and other faith-based groups that offer aid to immigrants at the U.S. southern border. And, you know, this really cuts into uh, religious freedom. For all the talk about religious freedom, that's part of manifesting one's belief, the pastoral care of caring for migrants, of, as we talked about last time, welcoming the stranger. To tell people that they cannot aid migrants. And from what I've seen, one of the arguments, one of the arguments is that it will encourage more migration. They're not smuggling people across the border. They're caring for people when they're already here. And uh, one of the arguments that I've seen is that it's promoting migration. Promoting migration. And so they want to nip that in the bud and try to punish Catholic charities. Oh my, oh my, oh my, my. What is wrong with some of these people. They need to crack open their Bible, their New Testament, claiming to be Christian. So-called Christians going after Catholic charities. So-called Christians in positions of leadership. In December, Representative Lance Gooden, Republican of Texas, who serves on the House Judiciary Committee, wrote a letter to Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, in the letter co-signed by Representative Tom Tiffany of Wisconsin, Republican, and Jake Elzey, Republican of Texas, the lawmakers complained that the Biden administration was, quote, allowing non-governmental organizations the freedom to aid and abet illegal aliens, end quote. First, you notice the language. Here, notice the language. Aid and abet. Because people are coming for asylum, because people are coming to better their lives there, aiding and abetting, that's the language you use for criminals. Aiding and and abetting armed robbery. Aiding and abetting murder. Aiding and abetting. It's the language of criminalizing and, and demonizing immigrants. And then notice the description, illegal aliens. Illegal, no person is illegal, and they like to attach that to illegal immigrants, and now they're attaching illegal aliens. So not only are these people deemed outside the law and criminal, but they're from another world, aliens. We know the word alien, but it has a double meaning. And they use it on purpose, because it's foreign, it's from outside, it's it's subhuman, an undocumented immigrant. They want to call them illegal aliens, criminal illegal aliens. Completely dehumanizing people so they can shove them on buses after they've already crossed deserts and rivers to to come to secure environment where they can sustain their lives and the lives of their children and family. And then they're shoved on buses to not go to the next town over or a couple hours away, but to go 1,400 miles, in this case with with a a toddler dying on the bus on on route to Chicago. Oh, boy, boy, boy. Oh. They claim they, they take everyone's temperature. 
and uh, make sure they're okay when they get on the bus. You know, I think the logic escapes people. People can get on a bus trip. I can get on a boat, and you send me out to the Pacific Ocean uh, for a few days or a week. Someone can get on a, a boat, and, and their health can be okay. And because of the journey and the stresses of the journey, their health can change. And when you put an already stressed person, especially a three-year-old, a three-year-old onto a bus, the health of the three-year-old can change during the course of the 14, 1,500-mile journey. But do they care? You just have a lot of people supporting these kind of these policies talking about more security, more fencing, fentanyl pouring through. Never want to take responsibility. They never want to take responsibility. Well, you know what? God is watching. God's watching. God knows every hair uh, on your head, on everyone's head. You can count every hair on every spot, every freckle, and everything you do. And when you demonize the least of these, and you disregard the humanity of the least of these, and you do not welcome the stranger, and you do not feed the hungry, or give drink to the thirsty, and you treat people in this manner, God is watching. What do you think? We'll be talking about some more of this travesty when we come back. Devant toi Mon cœur se serre Devant toi Je suis si fragile Un génie Thanks for joining me. This is Paul F.J. Ranius here on Ion Global Politics Radio. And we were talking about immigration. The Labor Department denounces surge in exploited migrant children. Some 300 
thousand miners have come to this country since 2021 alone, fueling a dramatic increase in migrant child labor. In an online report, the Labor Department announced an 87% increase in fines on employers in recent months. Companies including lumber mills and roofing contractors have been hit with $6.6 million in penalties. The department said that inspectors were pursuing more than 700 open cases and had already found 4,474 children working illegally since the start of the fiscal year, a 44% increase over the previous year. The acting Labor Secretary Julie Su said the administration was leaving, quote, no stone unturned to root out exploitative child labor. There are some terrible things that are wrong, Representative Anna G. Eshu, a Democrat from California, said at the end of the day, the HHS secretary told told the HHS secretary that the buck stops with him. So you have all these uh, migrant children workers uh, showing up, being uh, found to be being exploited. 12-year-olds working construction. 13-year-olds washing hotel sheets, 15-year-olds packaging Cheerios overnight. One boy was released to a man in Florida who promised to put him in school, but instead uh, threatened him, demanding money. Don't mess with me, the man wrote. You don't mean anything to me. This is from New York Times. They don't want to create a humane... uh, Worker program for migrants coming across the border, but American companies are willing to exploit, some American companies are willing to exploit child labor of migrants. So you have these companies exploiting child labor. Some of them say they don't know. Some of them know very well that they're exploiting child labor, migrant child labor that can't complain because they are migrants. That's exploiting them. And you tell me that you cannot create a system for incorporating migrants into the economy where we have a demand for labor and do it in a humane and just way where you're not employing migrant children and exploiting them? Sending billions and billions of dollars to a proxy war with a a bloated trillion-dollar military budget? They can't create a system and fund a system that can process people at the border and create a just and humane system? Why is that? Open-ended question. Why is that? I mean, I have my own thoughts, but what do you think? Why is that? Why can't they do that? All these excuses pointing the fingers. Them, there, there's criminal criminals over there. There's criminals on this side of the border. There's criminals everywhere. And there's good people everywhere, and and the criminals are a minority. It's a small group of people within within any population. And you use background checks, and you you look at the situation, you put resources to find out the vast majority of people and allow them to work. Take the criminals, people that are engaged in criminal activity, and separate that very, very small minority from the vast majority, the overwhelming majority vast majority of people that are hardworking, well-intentioned people. And you and we do that in any major American city. That's why there are people going about their day-to-day lives every day in Los Angeles and in New York and in Minnesota. And there are people that are up to no good, a very small percentage that are going into stores, robbing things, uh, stealing off the shelves. And the job of uh, a functioning system is to Say, this person is not doing the right thing, and these people are good and, and, and well-intentioned people. And that takes discernment. But when you have people that are 
apparently unable to use critical thinking or discernment, they want to lump everybody into one category. That comes about for one of a few reasons. Why is that? Why is it that so many Americans can't distinguish between the overwhelming majority of people crossing the border that want to come to this country to better their lives and to contribute, to contribute their labor and to better their lives and the lives of their, the fa- their family members, and they can't, and, and so many Americans in this country cannot distinguish the fact that there is an overwhelming majority of people crossing the border that fit into that category, and there is there's a small, small minority of people that that have ill intentions or that are up to no good. And the job of a functioning system, a highly developed system, is to distinguish one from the other. And it shouldn't be that hard uh, if some resources are poured into it, considering the overwhelming majority are well-intentioned. If it was a bunch of Swedish, impoverished Swedish people coming across the border, would people uh, demonizing immigrants, would it be the same? demonizing immigrants coming across the southern border, would it entail the same attitude? Would it? What would be the attitude of people against migrants in this country? What would be the attitude if those people were Swedish migrants? Luckily, we already have an example we can answer that question because the attitude is 180 degrees different with Ukrainian refugees in Europe, in the United States, Rolling out the red carpet, giving them social spending in Europe while people being hosed down on the Polish border from the Middle East across from Bob wired fencing. And the attitude appears much the same here in the United States. My goodness, my goodness. Native American was killed by uh, Border Patrol, stirred a lot of anger, August 7th, 2023. Ironic. Talking about my country and this, this, this is my country and that and that and all this rhetoric and uh, got border patrol killing the original inhabitants, the descendants of uh, original, the original inhabitants of this country, a country that was a land that was no other way to stay. It's stolen from the Native Americans. I mean, yes, it's going back in history, but uh, the Native Americans who were put on reservations and are one of the poorest communities if not the poorest, I I believe it's still the poorest economically community in in the country. Border Patrol goes ahead and kills a uh, a Native man, Native American man in Arizona. Shot nine times outside of his home. So much, so much travesty here. Thank you for joining me. You can get in touch with me with comments at ionglobalpolitics.com comments at ionglobalpolitics.com and as always keep the faith you're tuned in to ion global politics radio coming at you live from the heart of oregon's willamette valley broadcasting around the world on ionglobalpolitics.com 